Hello, this is Mir Orbanek from Computational Chemistry Materials and Climate Group and today I'm going to talk about mitigating noise on quantum computers. Our goal is to obtain reliable results from quantum computers. But there is a problem. These devices are affected by noise and errors. And the, the accuracy of the result is of the results is very limited because of uh, these factors. So first I'll briefly explain how quantum computers work. Uh, then I'll explain uh, what are the sources of noise and errors in devices today. And then um, I'll, I'll discuss uh, some methods how to mitigate some of these errors, mostly in software. This has an advantage that uh, these techniques also work when we are accessing a quantum computer in the cloud, so when we don't have physical access to the device. But first of all, I want to discuss briefly why we think quantum computers are useful. Um, they can solve certain mathematical problems that are too difficult for classical computers to solve. There is no hope that classical computers could ever solve these problems. A killer application is simulation of physical, chemical and biological systems, uh, quantum mechanical systems uh, especially. For example, designing uh, Catalysts for chemistry is a very hard problem, a computationally very hard problem, so this is one field uh, where quantum computers uh, are going to be useful. One example that's very uh, common in this field is nitrogen fixation. And nitrogen fixation is a process of converting nitrogen to ammonia. Uh, it's, uh, ammonia is then used in fertilizers, for instance. Um, it's interesting that about 2% uh, of total world energy production today are used for this chemical process. So, just to convert nitrogen molecules from the air into ammonia, um, it takes uh, this amount of uh, world energy, 2%. So, if there was a better way how to do this, uh, it would have uh, huge consequences uh, for industry and economy. And we already know that uh, it's possible to do it, because there is a, there is a small bacteria can, that can fix nitrogen more efficiently. And that bacteria uses uh, this molecule, we can see here, uh, to perform this uh, reaction. But the problem is, we don't know how, how does it work. And if we want to design um, some um, similar technologies, it's better to understand how this process works, because without that it's uh, it's just, uh, um, it's very difficult to, to come up with some good candidate molecules. So, these kind of problems, uh, simulating and calculating properties of molecules, is an is a area where quantum computers are expected to be great. What is a quantum computer? It's a stable and programmable quantum mechanical system. A building block is usually a two-level quantum mechanical system, and we call it a qubit. There are many examples of qubits. So, there are many physical realizations of quantum computers. Superconducting qubits use small superconducting loops that are at very low temperature, as qubits. Trapped ions use uh, the platform 
super con uh, quantum computing platform of trapped ions uses uh, ions that are in free space and they are trapped by lasers but there are other technologies like photonic circuits, neutral atoms, nitrogen vacancy centers in diamond or quantum dots and the physical realization of qubit is different in each of these technologies and also their properties are different um, so for the purpose of this talk um, the error mitigation um, is um, going to be different for each of th uh, these platforms uh, for instance one property of a quantum computer is a, is a decoherence time so that's um, that's essentially um, this, this characterizes how long the quantum computer stays stable and there are uh, huge differences in decoherence time for superconducting qubits a decoherence time can be 50 microseconds maybe 100 um, microseconds for trapped ions it's in minutes maybe in hours so it's uh, less of a problem for trapped ions than for superconducting qubits so we want to design a uh, um, method how to uh, mitigate errors we have to tailor it to a particular platform how does a quantum computer operate? we run a program for a quantum computer that's called a quantum circuit usually it's, we start fr from the initial state that's uh, usually zero state and here each line corresponds to one qubit so we have two qubits in total in this circuit so both qubits are initially in, in the zero state then we have some gates that operate on qubits a two qubit gate here and a one qubit gate here and some other gates and at the end there is a measurement and an important point is that the quantum computer can only output one outcome at a time so if we want to uh, uh, calculate almost anything we have to run the circuit many times to uh, measure the outcome statistics and outcome, outcome statistics is, uh, has some inherent ins uncertainty uh, the, which is called short noise so one shot here means one execution of a circuit and if we have uh, if we want to have uh, uncertainties small enough we have to um, run the circuit many times to get large number of shots it's important to uh, explain the difference between error correction and error mitigation here error correction is a set of techniques uh, to produce future fault tolerant quantum computers a fault tolerant is a quantum computer that can have an arbitrary low error rate uh, it's fairly difficult to design such a system on large scale so, so it's uh, at least a couple years away on the other hand error mitigation is a technique we can use already today or a set of techniques we can use and uh, we can improve the quality of the results from devices today to give you an idea how quantum error correction works it usually uses quantum error cor correcting codes so here is an example this code uses four physical qubits to encode two logical qubits and it can detect uh, one error in a physical qubit so uh, this is a simple code so it can only detect one error but larger error correcting codes can also correct errors and the idea of error correction is to uh, uh, perform similar um, operation 
operations. So to to uh, the idea is to encode logical qubits into many and many physical qubits uh, to uh, keep the uh, error rate low enough. Last year we uh, published a paper where we uh, calculated uh, properties of the hydrogen molecule using this error correcting code using two logical qubits. And we observed an improvement in the quality of the results comparing to using just two physical qubits. So, so um, this um, approach definitely works, uh, but to scale it to a huge number of qubits, uh, it's a, it's a research challenge. So for now, um, for today's devices, we can use techniques that we already uh, um, um, that uh, are useful today, and that's called error, error mitigation. So what are the sources of errors in quantum computers today? At first, um, we assume that the initial state is the zero state, but that's not always true because there is a significant um, probability that the initial state is not the zero state that increases with temperature. Then we have gate errors. Gate errors can be single qubit gate errors or two qubit gate errors. The two qubit gate errors are much worse and uh, much more, much higher. So most of the um, efforts um, is uh, focused on two qubit uh, gate errors. Then we have deco decoherence, as I mentioned already. So that's uh, um, where our quantum state uh, becomes um, unstable over time. There is also crosstalk. This uh, crosstalk happens when um, we apply a gate to a qubit, but this operation affects other qubits as well. Um, then at the end we have readout. Readout errors I'll discuss later, but it's also important that uh, readout uh, is a fairly slow operation, so there is a significant decoherence during the readout that has to be taken into account. Then we have short noise. Uh, as I mentioned, statistical uncertainty uh, even present even on an ideal quantum computer. And I also want to mention calibration drift. A quantum computer has to be calibrated to perform well. Um, but the problem is that the parameters or the calibration change over time. So, so if we calibrate the quantum computer now, in one hour, in four hours, the calibration is not going to be that accurate as uh, when we calibrated it. So uh, calibration has to be performed very often uh, to, um, to, to have a quantum computer operating properly. Now I want to discuss uh, um, how to correct uh, readout errors. So readout errors is when a readout we call it a readout error a readout error um, a situation where the qubit is in a in a zero state, for example, but we measure one as a measurement outcome, or vice versa if the qubit is in a one state and we measure uh, zero. We can uh, mitigate readout errors by uh, estimating readout error probabilities and correcting outcome statistics. For so, for example, uh, how to do it for one qubit? 
we um, prepare the qubit in the zero state, we measure uh, it many times and we estimate the probability of measuring zero and measuring one. Similarly, we create the qubit in a one state and again we measure the probability of measuring zero and one. From these four numbers we can construct a readout matrix and then when we run another experiment we measure the outcome statistics here and we can use the inverse of the readout matrix to calculate corrected um, statistics. So uh, it works because this model is a linear model so an inverse of the readout matrix uh, can produce uh, fairly good results but uh, to do this for multiple qubits and to uh, fix uh, some problems that are present uh, when we just calculate the inversion uh, we use a technique called error unfolding that was developed in um, for correcting readout errors in um, accelerator detectors and we discussed um, how to use error unfolding for quantum computing in the paper we published last year. Another simple and very useful technique is uh, zero noise extrapolation. So the idea is to vary the amount of noise and then um, calculate or extrapolate the uh, the results to the zero noise limit. So here in this figure uh, the figure is a time evolution of a spin model um, so we used six qubits here to to calculate uh, this time evolution. So there is there are three different levels of, of noise, levels of noise. So five times the noise, three times the noise, one time the noise amount, and then we have uh, the extrapolated values uh, to zero noise limit, to the zero noise limit, right? So, so this is uh, quite simple and it works uh, uh, quite well. Uh, this technique was mostly developed by researchers from IBM but I, I also want to point out that uh, my uh, colleagues from the High Energy Physics Division here at Berkeley Lab um, published a nice paper about how to, how to apply this technique when we have uh, uh, not only integer factors uh, f um, for the noise amount but also fractional factors. Last technique I want to uh, mention is uh, uh, using noise estimation circuits. So here we have two, uh, two circuits. A target circuit which is the original circuit we, we uh, want to uh, run and the estimation circuit. And the estimation circuit has a, it has exactly the same structure as the target circuit, only the only the the only difference is that the estimation circuit can be uh, simulated on a classical computer easily. Um, and the idea is to run the estimation circuit on a quantum computer, measure. Um, the, the observables we want to measure and uh, do the same thing on a classical computer and by comparing these two values from the classical and quantum computer we can estimate the noise rate and then we run the target circuit on a quantum computer and because we know the noise rate we can use uh, the noise rate to correct the uh, the the results uh, for the target circuit. Here is a uh, small example. Uh, so the target circuit has all these uh, single qubit and two qubit gates and for the 
uh, estimation circuit we replace uh, the gates in red uh, by identities. So the structure is the same, only the um, the the parameter essentially the, only the parameters of the gates change um, to zeros. So this is a technique um, we are working on right now. So in conclusion, quantum computing has potential of solving hard scientific and industrial problems. Error correction requires huge resources, but error mitigation is something that's useful already today and, and it can improve uh, our experiments on existing quantum computers. Here are uh, my collaborators at the lab. Thank you very much for your attention.